Welcome to another video tutorial in our series, Demystifying 5G, provided to you by Roden Schwarz. My name is Mike Hotkamp and I'm working as a technology manager for Roden Schwarz in Munich, Germany. Enhanced mobile broadband is one of these three categories that have been identified as application scenario to be supported by a 5G communication standard. That scenario calls for gigabit experience as peak data rates and 100 megabits as average data rate per user. These data rates are only achievable while increasing transmission bandwidth significantly. In LTE, we have today a maximum bandwidth of 20 MHz per carrier and can accurate up to five component carriers to support a bandwidth up to 100 MHz. For LEAS 13, an increase of number of component carriers up to even 32 is foreseen. However, in 5G, we are taking right away about a signal bandwidth of 500 MHz, 1 Giga, even 2 GHz are under consideration. These bandwidths are only available in the centimeter wave and millimeter wave frequency range. So what are the exact frequency bands which are currently under discussion and which are also up to decide upon by local authorities responsible for spectrum regulation? When we discuss spectrum and regulations, we are coming back to the ITU. ITU was discussed as one of our last videos when we explained 5G requirements and the potential timeline. The ITU's goal is also to harmonize frequency regulation worldwide. However, different parts of the world are using the available radio spectrum in a different way and global harmonization was and is an always challenging task. Nonetheless, three regions are defined by the ITU. Region 1 is Europe, Russia and Africa, indicated here in yellow. Region 2 is the Americas and Region 3 Asia, including Australia. At the recent World Radio Conference, the WRC 15 in Geneva last year, for the first time 5G frequency candidates have been discussed. Each region submitted proposals and towards the end it was concluded to study certain frequency regions at specific re frequency ranges. Before discussing the future 5G bands, let us shortly recall the WRC 15 decision taken on additional spectrum allocated to today's IMT and IMT advanced systems, so LTE and LTE advanced. So if we zoom into the spectrum area below 6 GHz, first, I first listed the frequencies already in the use of different regions before WRC 50. The next block adds the decisions from November last year. Generally additional spectrum allocations depend on the country or region and the list is potentially not entirely precise. It's hardly too possible to digest information from a multiple hundred pages document into a single slide. However, it should be provided an impression with respect to the frequency range and the bandwidth allocated. Still, the bandwidth available below 6 GHz is limited simply because of the absolute frequency used. It is obvious that bigger junks are only available at higher frequency. It should also be noted that the higher the frequency, the lower the link budget, as we all know. So let's come back to the potential spectrum above 6 GHz and what WRC had identified in this respect. First, the slide shows the frequency candidates proposed by Europe, which rep represents ITU Region 1. Here is an overlay, the proposal by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, the regulator in the United States. As you can see, some overlap with the European proposal. However, the current regulation in the EU uh, US also allows the E-band to be utilized for wireless communication when following the guideline not to harm another oc occupant and user of the frequency band. Also the frequency range between 92 and 95 GHz is regulated in that way. Last but not least, the proposal from China as repre representing ITU Region 3. As we can tell, another view on the frequency landscape. So let's see the outcome of the decision. At WRC 15, a general decision was taken to analyze the frequency range between 24 and 86 gigahertz until the next conference. Thus, the studies shall provide the necessary information to allow for a decision on additional spectrum by that time. More precisely, the listed frequency bands in this slide were identified to be studied for future 5G communication. Notably, no bands between 6 and 24 gigahertz are identified. And also interestingly, the 28 GHz band, a frequency that some early prototypes are utilizing, isn't part of that list. 
However, it is still anticipated by a number of key players in the wireless industry that the 28 GHz band will play an important role. The next WRC takes place in end 2019. So let's see what the ITU will finally decide with respect to IMT 2020 bands and their potential use for 5G. Many thanks for watching.